Welcome to the Black Lion Podcast. I am your host, Lex. And I am your co-host, Don. And today we have our own special guest today. Um, guest, please introduce yourself. Hey, how's it going? My name is Robert Rochester Jr. You can go ahead and just call me Bert. And I am excited to be here. Thank you for coming. Yes. So do you own the business? Wait, wait, wait. You broke up a little bit. You can go I ahead said, and repeat that. I said, do you own a business? So I own my own um, freelance business right now. I do digital marketing. And then I also got a startup online spiritual shop going on at the same time. Okay. Tell us about it. So yeah, so with the, um, as, as actually you all started, so I'm a tarot card. You know anything about tarot? Yeah. Uh, well, for my audience and people who's listening and don't know nothing about tarot, tarot is nothing but a deck of cards with pictures and images on it and stuff. And I use them to read people energy and tell them about different situations and stuff. I use it more as a, um, a deck for empowerment and helping the individual work through obstacles. Now, um, I've been reading for a long, long time. I've been reading since I was 16. I'm about to be 30 here in the next couple months, right? And um, a few years ago, I moved to Texas. And it all started in Texas. Um, it was really big down there about the tarot scene. Like, everybody knew about tarot. Um, I'm originally from Delaware, and I now live in Philadelphia, but I'm actually in Delaware at this very moment. But um. I was in Texas and I got to Texas and stuff and people found out I did the tarot cards. Everybody started coming to me wanting to get a tarot card reading. And then I had to deny people. And then they started wanting to toss money towards me to get a tarot card. I'm like, y'all want to pay me for this? So they um, encouraged me to start my own like tarot business. And then it started with that. At the same time, I was already going to school um, for business. I had um just finished getting my associates and I was working on my bachelor's in business. And one thing I knew is that I needed to market myself. I was already working at a marketing firm around that time. So, but since it was tarot, I'm like, I can't do traditional marketing. It's not going to work. So that's when I went digital and started um, learning digital marketing stuff to market my business. And it just kind of took off from there. One thing led to another. I ended up learning new additional skills to help promote my tarot services. And then as you know, I started doing freelance digital marketing on the side. That's great. Yeah, thank so, you. Quick question. Uh, when you talk about your background, you said you had to deny people. Why did you deny people? because um they wasn't paying me and so they just wanted the tarot card reading so i'm like i can't i only did it as a hobby up until when i moved to um texas it wasn't like i was doing it full time or something people back home really didn't even know i read tarot cards except for like friends and everything um like my family didn't find out to a few years ago that I was doing the tarot cards and i started my tarot business and I had to deny people because they wanted my time. And I'm like, I don't got time to read cards for you right now. I got to go to work and make my money. <laughs> and then that's when they started saying like, hey, I will pay you for your time. I just want your tarot card. Well, that's even better. You get paid for a hobby. That's great. Yes. You, are you the only child or anything like that? Or no, I'm a middle middle child. So I got an older sister and I got a younger sister. And let's your video went out. It's just a picture again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you knew that. Yeah, I'm doing around the whole video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what do you see your business going in the next like five years? And so, in the next five years, I'm actually so the tarot ended up turning into more of a spiritual shop. It's just one of the services I offer now. So. One thing I do offer through my shop is actually um, crystal jewelry, crystal bracelets and stuff, like the ones I'm wearing right now. And honestly, I'm just looking to scale and grow my business, but that's more still like a hobby of mine. It's something I'm always going to want to do, even though I turn my hobby into a business. What I really do like doing is 
digital marketing. So I'm also building me out a digital marketing agency and I want to be able to grow that in the next five years. You were asking me a question about um, my friends on um, Facebook. Yeah. Explain, go on, on yeah, little just, detail about just, that. Yeah, I just learned something new is like, well, one thing of a digital marketing space, using your profile is a good way to find leads and customers and everything, right? But if you got too many friends on your Facebook um, friend list, not everybody sees your post. That's a general rule. Like, it doesn't matter if it's your personal page or your business page, Facebook limits the um interaction that you have with people so not everybody's going to see your post so if you got a business page you got to tell your followers to hit um the option to see your post first if you got a personal page and like in your case you got almost five thousand people not everybody's seeing what you're posting and everything so um not right now you gotta go all right sorry man <laughs> So on Facebook and everything, um, your engagement get lowered. So for you, you got 5,000 people. Do you honestly think all 5,000 people are seeing your post? I know they don't see my post. All those yeah. 5,000 people. Now, there, now, for the longest time, we've been teaching people like, hey, go through your Facebook, clean up all the people. You got some people who turns off their, deactivate their Facebook. So now they're stuck on your friend list who's occupying a slot. You got people who just not on there at all. They're just there just to have a Facebook because we need Facebook to do a lot of things, right? And then on top of that, um, so you really just want to keep it cleaned up. Now there's a program that you can go get. Um, it's called Friends Lister. I got to double check the name of it. I literally just found out about it last night and I ran the program myself, but it will go through and it will show who's actually seeing your post, who's engaging with you and everything. And then it's going to show you everybody who's not engaging with you and give you an option to remove those people. Because there's no point of having people on your profile, your list that's not going to engage. You want to go find fresh new people to engage with. Yeah, that sounds really good. I, I would use it mostly for our own page, the Black Lion Podcast, more so than for my personal profile. Like I said, but either way, nowadays, the way we're moving and stuff, because social media was now, it's a decade old. It's time to start using it a little bit more smart. You can continue using it to have it for friends and family, but when you got like 5,000 people, you're really not using it for friends and family. It's starting to become an extension of your business and stuff. So why not turn that into part of your funnel to get people to come towards your business? Yeah, exactly. So well, that's, what I was, that's what I was asking. Go ahead, my bad. <laughs> you know, just little details about myself. I'm, I'm the youngest out of all my own mom and um, dad's children. And we started this podcast just to reach out to um, other black businesses and things of that sort and talk about problems that the black community here. So that's really what we do. And Lex can tell you about herself. Oh, man. Um... Well, I mean, I, okay, so <laughs> currently, I am 26. I am a single mother. Um, I just got accepted into my graduate school to get my master's degree. Nice. And, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so far, it's going good. I'm just, you know, praying and hoping that everything will go smooth and I'll get everything I need done for me and my baby. But um, once, you know, once I, you know, do everything I need to do, I want to get back to the community and help, you know, single parents. Nice, nice. That's a good way to go about it and stuff. And it's all about delivering and giving value back to the community and giving value back to the people you want to serve. Yes. So, um, how did you? Oh, 
Which one? I know, right? <laughs> How did your business come about? <laughs> Oh, so um, my business came about because um, when I moved to Texas, people wanted tarot readings, and that's when I was just still doing it as a hobby, and that's when they started asking me, asking to pay me for my time, and then they encouraged me to start my business. So I started the business, and then it just one thing led to another, and four years later, here I am, still kicking it. <laughs> yeah, let me rephrase that. I mean, like, when did you start? Okay. Re- did you say that? Um, say it one time, you broke out. When did you start, like the tarot cards? So, oh, so yeah, I started tarot when I was 16. 16, okay. So that, that was so 13 what, years ago. 15 years old. Say that one more time. I'm sorry you keep breaking up. <laughs> why? Oh my gosh. What made you get into it when you were 16? No, it you was think- purely by accident. It wasn't like I went out and said, I'm just going to become a tarot reader. Nowadays, a lot of people see tarot card readings online and they want to become a tarot card reader. Nah, for me, this was just by mistake. Um, I remember I had just got my first job. It was the summer of 2016 and everything, and I took my first paycheck, and um, one thing I was really back into back then was animes and Japanese comic books and um, reading them and stuff, so I went to the bookstore to go pick up some um, Japanese comic book or mangas, and I was waiting in line. And I was like four, the fourth person behind in the line. So, you know, when you get up to the register and stuff, they got the shelf, bookshelves and stuff trying to upsell you those little knickknacks and everything. So I was just gone browsing spirit and I saw a little tiny box of tarot cards. And I'm like, tarot cards? And like um, my background for as far as coming up and stuff, both my parents are Christian and everything. My dad's a little bit more strict and always like to stay away from like the tarot cards and stuff like that. Now yeah. I always been an independent free thinker of myself. I question everything. Like that's just part of who I am, my identity. So I'm like, let me figure out what these tarot cards are all about. I just wanted to take them home, figure out, learn about them a little bit and then call it a day. And that's the, you know, I started using them and um, they did start freaking me out because I'm like, yo, this is so relevant to my life right now. Like, how did these cards know? And I just started using them. Okay. So um, how much do you charge? I know you said you had a website. So for um, a regular reading, I charge $65 and everything. They can get more advanced. So right now, I'm actually getting ready to do um, New Year readings. Oh, so that's good. That's a l- yeah, that's a little bit more in-depth. It's more advanced and everything. But I'm going to just be starting that one out at $99. Okay. And uh, my clientele, because... There's so many, there's so many tarot readers online and everything. So for me personally, because I'm in the business space, I'm in the business development space. That's actually what I'm finishing my bachelor's degree in is um, organization management um, development. That's great. So thank you. And so my thing is, I'm all about... Um, personal development, professional development. I have, like, I'm finishing up my 52nd and 53rd book of this year alone. So my ideal people who I want to help out is other people who wants to start a business, who wants to um, change careers, get out of the line of work, get out of the nine to five. They want to start bringing some type of financial freedom in their life. But there's so many things that may be blocking them from doing and stuff. And Tara can really help figure out what are your obstacles? Are you too much inside your head? Are there external forces happening around you that's keeping you from achieving what you're doing? Are you just playing around and you're not taking things serious I can see that through the cards and I can communicate that not just am I going to communicate that I'm going to give you methods and ways to go ahead and work through those issues and I'm going to give you solid bliss um, a solid business like program or path to reach your goals and stuff I'm not just going to like a lot of tarot readers and stuff they just read the cards but they don't know how to help the individual I am actually here to help the individual. So I like focusing on business people, people who wants to go down that path and like create a legacy for themselves. 
What's your favorite um anime? Ah, uh, oh my god, there's been one too many. But if I had to say, out of all the animes that I I really absolutely love, it was this one called um Sorcerer Hunters. I don't know if you ever heard heard of that one or not. Yes. Old school anime. I'm pretty sure it came out in the 1980s or something and everything, but that is my absolutely favorite anime to have on DVD and everything. My favorite is Detective Conan, but it used to be called Case Close. Okay, okay. I know that one too. Yeah, that came out in like the 90s too. So, question: How has yes. the corona impacted your business? Who? So, when it comes to getting business stuff, you got to start somewhere, right? You got to have a job so you can funnel that money back into getting your business and stuff up right. and going. So, one of my main source for income was I was working with a company called Instacart. Don't know if you heard of them or not. Yeah, I was with them for five years. They decided when Corona happened, we had so many issues. Like, because there wasn't items available at the store, you know, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, water, it was out. Like, I was out there. Everything was gone. I got pictures. I had to take pictures because I was in disbelief at how bare the store was. We had lines going outside the store and everything. Um, and so, ultimately, what happened was they terminated me. And, but not because of my own negligence. It was because of their own negligence. They turned off all call support for the employees. So if you had an issue and stuff, you wasn't able to get help. So if you wasn't able to finish the order because there wasn't nothing at the store, item wasn't getting delivered to the house because there wasn't nothing to the store and stuff, or a lot of items missing that was out of our control, they ended up blaming us. And so they got rid of, rid of a lot of us, unfortunately, during that time. So from that, when that happened, that really did take a toll on me and everything. And right around the same time, a car broke down and everything. <laughs> so luckily, um, through the grace of God, I was able to get onto the economic um, stimulus package, whatever it was called, the relief package. So I was getting that $600 a week. Now that was no ordinary you know, close to how much I was making and everything, but that really did impact me and stuff. And then I ended up, um, I <laughs> was going through a move and everything because my roommate and landlord like screwed me over. <laughs> yeah, it's sad, but they screwed me over. So that's when I moved to Philadelphia. I was actually living in um, Ardmore, PA at, um, and yeah, that happened. So after that, I was getting the stimulus check and stuff. And luckily, right around the time when it ran out and stuff, I got into a new line of work, which is uh, merchandising. That's what I do. I travel a lot now. So, but that isn't allowing me to still work on my business and get the hustle on. And a lot of people don't realize, and that's why I like to focus on like for tarot with people getting their business up and start they don't realize how much time goes into starting a business right it's a long learning curve you don't know this you don't know that you got to learn this i got a lot of friends and stuff who's in the network marketing space and i see them trying to push their product push their product push their product and stuff and i'm like it's not working. People using their personal page, like the things I know, you need to know how to market yourself effectively. A lot of people is just pushing the um, features of the product and they pretty much put in this self first instead of putting the customer first. So you need to know how to deliver value to your customer. You gotta know how to speak to the customer and speak about what features and benefits do they want? How is this gonna help them? And often you gotta know how to solve their problem, but when you're just pushing the product and blasting them and blasting them on your personal page, everybody's eyes are gonna glaze over they're gonna put the tunnel vision on and they're gonna look straight past you. <laughs> And it's that's like, have you ever experienced that? Like you see friends and family or something on their personal page and they're trying to get their hustle in, but you're not paying attention to them? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you got to. 
You must. So I see a lot of that happen all the time. Like you gotta know how to speak to your audience, but it takes a lot of work. Like that's one thing I've been really um, blessed to have learned the last few years is the whole digital marketing landscape. So I know as far as as what direction I'm taking my business in, I know what I'm doing. Like any advice I had to give to any of your listeners is this, like save money, save money, save money for (laughs) advertising costs it really comes down to advertising and how many people can you acquire how many customers are you going to be able to acquire but you need to know how to get onto those facebook ads youtube ads and advertise to the right people but you also need to know how to identify your audience and you don't you can advertise all you want but if your message is being shown to the wrong person they're not going to buy into it they're not going to want to learn more. Right. <laughs> like I get bombarded with ads like all the time. Like I don't even like getting on social media like that unless it's to really network and stuff. I actually got a extension on my computer that blocks my news feed. Like you, I can't even see what people are posting and stuff because I'm so sick of seeing ads that don't resonate with me. Mm. Everybody's trying to market to me and I'm like, you got the wrong person. I don't want to buy your stuff. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I want to see things that's more interesting to me. Like I like making, I like candles or like jewelry. I like want to see more exercise equipment and stuff. Shoot, I might want to see a car for all I care on my profile, technology, cell phones and stuff. No, I get bombarded all the time with these lame, inexperienced marketers that don't know what they're doing. <laughs> well, you know what they say, practice makes perfect. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what kind of water do you um do you and your family drink well me personally so i live with my roommates and stuff and i actually got the water right here that's so my nice drink <laughs> essentia i've been all big crazy about huh no go ahead you can keep the oh, uh, okay now, for the long, like, I've been weird about water since I was about 18, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you ever seen a movie called The Crazies. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that was all about biological warfare, and they contaminated the water system. After I saw that movie, y'all couldn't get me to really drink water out of the tap again. Oh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I read the... I don't... I distilled my water and then I got an alkaline pitcher that I like I do like two different processes. I do on distilling my water first, that's to take away the impurities. Then I put it in the alkaline pitcher. Nice. Yep. That's the way to go. Like, see, I'm really I'm a vegetarian, first of all. I'm really big on health and everything. This past year I already lost 60 pounds. I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> last year because I became a vegetarian I was transitioning and I was eating everything unhealthy too many carbs so much carbs and a lot of soda so I had to cut that back out but for the most part I'm really self-conscious about what I put into my body like the food industry like I don't like getting into the conversation with a lot of friends and stuff because they hold their eyes at me but Honestly, the food industry and stuff, what they pump into our animals and everything is not good. My dad was military, so I lived overseas and everything. Or in Europe, they does things completely different than what America and the United States do. The our freaking um the FDA allows them to get it ripped up. They can put anything in our food pretty much and everything, and it affects us all to make that profit. And I'm really self-conscious. I don't like like the animal products and stuff. I won't eat. Before now, I'm at a point where I won't eat no more meat. When I was transitioning, the only meat I would eat was like, it had to be free of any hormones and everything. I was at a point where like, I would go to a butcher and go get the meat if I knew they actually raised the animal in a humane and right way, but now I cut it all out. And, um, the only reason I even became a vegetarian, I was already eating clean when I was still eating meat, but I actually found out I was allergic to chicken. 
and I can't eat chicken because I will break out <laughs> in purple <laughs> highs, red highs. I would get reptile skin on my face. I can't eat. Yeah, I was eating chicken for so many years, but when I was in Texas, they messed with just to keep the story short, a restaurant messed up, threw my food out, gave me a whole bunch of their chicken, and then I ate it all in like almost one night, and then I broke out. So I went vegan for the next month, and then every time I came back to eating chicken, I kept breaking out, and I kept breaking out, and I kept breaking out. And then just this summer, I actually found it wasn't just the chicken I was allergic to. I'm allergic to the freaking egg, too. I was eating so much eggs this summer. I started breaking out again. I'm like, what is going on? Why is my body breaking out? I haven't ate no chicken or anything. And then I had to cut the egg out of my system and my skin cleared back up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> listen, to, you got to listen to your body, guys. You got to listen to your body. No, I'm a, but I'm a pescatarian. Nice. See, that's where I was before I became all of this. I was just eating chicken and fish. But chicken was my favorite thing. So after that, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I was. I just eat like shrimp. But that would be the only thing I'll eat. Or lobster. See, yep. But you relate. But yeah, that's why I'm like very my cautious. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on letting it go. It's yeah. hard for a lot of people. Um, what I would recommend is like choosing one or two meats that you know you really can't let go. For me, back then, it was chicken and fish. But then I would cut down how many times I consumed meat throughout the week. So before I even way before I became a vegetarian, I was only eating meat three times a week. The rest of the days would be like veggie days. So when you eat now, like your diet now, like how is your portions? So honestly, I like I'm, I make a lot of bowl um, dishes. So okay, I a bowl I fill right on up, and then I eat everything in the bowl, and usually that keeps me fed until my next meal. And usually I go, honestly, I go the whole entire day with just about one or two meals, maybe a couple snacks here and there, and that's about it. I don't eat a lot. I actually um, do intermittent fasting. So um, usually around, I've been off this week. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but from around 7.30 at night, I would stop eating. I would stop eating for the whole entire night. We usually get to bed to 9.30, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and then I wouldn't start eating to about 7.30, 8 p.m. the next day again, giving my body time to fast and everything which actually helps you maintain weight and lose weight and stuff and then I had an eating period an eating window where I get to eat as much as I want but during that eating window mm -hmm. I eat like I said one or two main meals a day and that's about it I'm not like super craving I guess because my food is filled with lots of fibers and stuff I don't eat a lot it's it digests really slow <laughs> okay So can you go ahead? No, I was about to say I'll be eating one meal a day. That's what I've been doing. I, whatever I eat, I just eat it one time, and I just drink water throughout the day. Just a lot of water to try to get a gallon of water down the day. And that's the way to do it too. A lot of people keep asking, like, how you lose so much weight and everything. I actually started a little Facebook group where I'm just sharing some things that I'm doing to lose weight. But at the end of the day. It's just one formula. Know how it is calorie intake, a caloric deficit. Keep that caloric deficit low and you will lose weight no matter what you eat. Okay. Right. That is the secret to losing weight. Like that's how I lost weight before because mm -hmm. this is my second time losing a whole bunch of weight. Um, and this is how I'm losing weight again from the weight that I picked up from last year. Just knowing how to not overtake so many calories throughout the um, day and week. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta start my diet soon because I've gained some some weight that I want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. but, um. Mm -mm. 
<laughs> like you said, that's my number one tip. If I had to give other suggestions to you, it's really, it comes down to your nutrition. You do not have to work out in order to lose weight. That's a myth. You do not have to work out. If you get your nutrition in check, you do good. Pay attention to the amount of calories that you are eating throughout the week. Because you can eat a lot of food in one day, but for the next couple of days, we'll know how to ration your food out and keep your calorie restriction to a certain level by the end of the week, and you're going to lose weight. You're just going to lose weight. Um, my biggest thing, though, is don't be afraid of stay away from sugar, but don't be afraid of fats. Have you ever heard of the keto diet and stuff? Or like Atkins diet, keto is nothing but Atkins repackaged. But um, proteins and fats are your friends. <laughs> proteins and fats. I actually do. I drink a keto supplement that actually helps with the um, fat loss. Okay. What's the name of it? It's called Prove It. That's B P R U V I T. So, um, friend gave it to me last summer. I really wasn't all about using it. One, he gave me nasty flavors. <laughs> <laughs> I like fruity flavors. He gave me like this chocolate mint crap, and I was like, I, I, I avoided him because he was selling it. I avoided him and everything, but I like being supportive. So I eventually bought some extra ones from him and everything, a variety pack. And then I found like, okay, the fruit stuff tastes really good. But I started buying it because it actually started helping me with my sleeping. I was having sleeping problems. So I was able to go to sleep after that. (laughs) I need to. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, I have a hard time sleeping. I'm usually up until like four or five o'clock in the morning and then go back to sleep for like a two hours and wake back up. So I need that. See. It gives you energy, that's for sure. And like um that's coming from that's from um, you you only get it through a sales rep. So I'm a I'm a sales rep with them. I don't push it out like that. That's not what I'm all about. I like using the product mm-hmm. but I get discounts from being a sales rep. <laughs> You got to know how to get your stuff. So that's what I, but yeah, it's really, really good. And it's not going to be everybody's flavor. I tried giving it to my older sister because she was like, why do you look like a little boy again? (laughs) No. Mm -mm. When I finished my diet, my family told me I looked like a crackhead. Because they were They said she looked like was like I didn't want to ask you were you doing anything I just thought you know I didn't know I'm like no I just <laughs> oh no that's yeah. not good so, back up weight and I'm like I'm not liking it I need to like keep my weight down so I need well, to- maybe this time you got to focus on building muscle yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> But and people do notice, people do notice when your body starts to change. I thought it was from me from like, you know, when I was doing my diet, I'm like, whoa, I was really skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a friend right now, um, somebody who started reaching out to me. And I'm like, why are you still trying to lose weight? Like, you need to be putting on weight. Like, she's legitimately only 105 pounds. That's and wanted to know how I was losing yeah. weight because she wanted to lose more weight. I'm like, God, you got no, you need to put on weight. Like, why are you still trying to lose weight? <laughs> but, yep. I gave it to my sister as she like, why do you look like a little boy and everything? Like, I'm like, I lost weight. <laughs> she didn't like it, but she got a very high sugary diet. Yeah. So I think people who drink a lot of sugar are not going to really relate to the flavor, no matter if it's a fruit base or cream base or stuff, it's not going to sit well with them. Other people I know who tried it, they like it. So to each their own. I like it. I prefer to drink it over soda and everything. When I order it, I keep, I get a caffeine pack. I get a caffeine-free pack and I drink the caffeine-free ones 
instead of wanting to go get like an orange juice or a tea or a soda because it helps. And one, it helps you lose weight. And two, it to me, me personally, it tastes good. <laughs> so why would I go spend like money on something else that's not good for me? Right. Don, any more questions? What advice do you have for the audience if they're trying to start a business? All right, so if you're trying to start a business, this is my one thing. I want to drop a couple of nuggets for y'all. So you're starting to learn one thing. You got to have discipline. You got to know how to stick it through because it's not going to be easy. You're going to have ups and down challenging days. On those challenging days, you got to know that better days are going to come, but you got to put the work in first. Second, you got to know how to play. It's all about mindset. It's really about training your mind first to get into starting your own business because you're the one who's going to be handling a lot of things. You start to take on so many different roles that like a corporation would only assign out to one person. Now you got these 13 different roles that you're doing. So now you got to learn how to develop your skills. If you can't develop, if you don't got no money, you got to learn how to do this stuff yourself. You got money, you can learn how to leverage other people's skills go find freelancers and stuff and help get them to help you out but it's all going to come down to mindset and knowing that you got to know how to know how to pick up new skills be willing to learn second thing next thing this would be the third learning curve everything takes a while to learn you're not going to get it overnight so you're expecting to do something in the next couple weeks and launch from start to finish i hate to burst your bubble but it's not going to happen just like me when I first started, um, I needed to learn how to get my um, digital marketing stuff together. And digital marketing is not an easy feat because unfortunately, um, we're in this weird time period where at one point, a lot of people were using computers. Now everybody's on their smartphones and you need a computer. Let me get that straight out there. You're doing a business you need a computer and you need to make sure your computer skills up there you need to know how to do digital marketing you need to know how to get a customer and acquire the customers and three another thing is delayed gratification don't expect everything is going to happen instantly but it's not and if you keep giving out for something that makes you feel better right then and there you're not going to be able to make it in this business do not, do not make sure you have a job. Do not quit your job and you try to start a business thinking you're going to just get a whole bunch of customers because it just don't work that way. Don't it push. really don't. <laughs> don't push it. And last but not least, um, you just got to figure out what type of business do you want to do and how you're going to be able to give value to other people. There's a lot of different um, business things you can do for business. Um, at this time, I really didn't go into my like third source of um, revenue and making money and stuff in my business and everything. Because there's a third one out there. I focus on the main two, but um, do you, are you a creative individual? Do you got a service to offer and stuff? Do you got to know how to offer your service or offer whatever you make? Like um, with my spiritual um, business, it's called, it's, I never told you out the name of it either. It's called My Gaia Style. And you can go to mygaiastyle.com, but I make candles, right? So, it out. M Y G A I A S T Y L E.com. And um, I make candles, right? So that's a skill. That's something I'm able to do and I'm able to produce. So that's something I'm able to make and sell. If you don't know how to make something or you don't got a service to sell, that's okay. There's other um, businesses that you can go get, become a part of. Um, a lot of the successful entrepreneurs out there represent, recommend network marketing. They're like small franchises. You just join the company. It's got a low barrier to entry, usually anywhere from $30 to $500. And that's not a lot of money to get the rights to resell another company's stuff. Okay. It's all going to come down to marketing and stuff. Because a lot of people is lost. They're like, I want to start a business, but I don't know what to sell. I don't got a service to sell on anything. 
well, go buy into another company and sell it. You don't got to like reinvent the wheel or anything like that. <laughs> and then just learn how to um, have a lot, a lot of grit, having a lot of mental toughness and stick it through because you're there's going to be many, many days you go without learning how to sell. And that's the last biggest thing I can tell anybody, regardless of what type of business you start, whether it's something that you know how to create something and you're selling it, whether you've got a service and you're offering your services to other people, or whether you got to go and find another business and buy into their business, just resell their products, you got to know how to sell. At some point or another, you might, if you're doing, especially if you're doing service-based stuff, you got to know how to get on the phones. You got to know how to talk to people. You got to know how to approach them. You got to know how to sell. Selling is a skill. I am, I'm, I still consider myself terrible, but I was horrific at selling. Selling and marketing is not the same thing. Like, you got to know how to sell your stuff. And if you don't know how to sell your stuff, it's going to come with a lot of aches, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. So you got to have that mental toughness to want to do better, how to get better and everything. But selling is a must if you're going to be doing your business. Like with selling other business products, you got to know how to approach people and tell them all about the stuff and everything. Like I said, um, the keto stuff, I don't really waste a lot of time with the um, keto business because that's not my thing. It's just not, I got my spiritual business. I got my freelance business. I'm not trying to divide myself with too many things. <laughs> but um, it's something I keep in my back pocket. If somebody just really wanted to learn how to run that business, I can help them do it. It's just all about, are you willing to learn the skills, master the skills in order to sell and market yourself? That's what it comes down to, sales and marketing. That's great. Well, yeah, some great advice. I will tell you that. I really liked your advice. Yes, I hope they like it too. We yes, thank you thank for you. doing the interview with us today. And how can people find you if they look no for you? So, my full name, Robert Rochester Jr. You can go to robertrochesterjr.com. You can type in Robert Rochester Jr. on Instagram. I'm going to pop right on up. You can type in Robert Rochester Jr. on Facebook and everything, and I will pop right on up. So that's how people can find me. I will say this one last shout out. Like I said, I got my hands in a little bit of everything. But if you're a Pennsylvania, South Jersey resident and stuff, and you want to learn how to save some electric on your electric bill, hit me up. Because I can help you save about $300 off of that mm. a year. That is great. Well, yeah. thank you. We hope you enjoyed it. And we hope to get you back on the, yes, on the show. Thank one you day, for having one me day. on. Yes, yes. Enjoyed the time and everything. Thank you for having me. I know it's last minute, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Right. Have a good one, guys. You too. Thanks. <laughs>